on data visualization with Tableau and Power BI. My name is Harshit and I am instructor for this class. In this course, you will be learning various concepts in Tableau and Power BI with hands-on exercises to create powerful business intelligence data charts for finding useful insights, performing data analytics, and can be used for making critical business decisions and can be used for storytelling. It can be also used for various other applications like you can collaborate with your friends on a particular data set that you have can be used for data science and machine learning projects as well. Here you will learn to create various kinds of visualization charts such as simple bar chart, line chart, stepped line chart, pie chart, ring chart, uh, interactive tree map chart, uh, geographical map chart, area map chart, tables and matrices, ribbon charts, butterfly chart, funnel chart, dual axis chart and much more. Moreover, you will also learn various other techniques such as drill down, uh, simple and complex date slicers, uh, categorical slicer, using live web data. Uh, you will also learn about map and using custom filters as well as you can use uh, any of the chart as a filter. You will learn to create dual access chart in the complex form and much more. So if you are curious to learn these business intelligence and data visualization techniques in Tableau and Power BI, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hi friend, welcome to this lesson where you are going to learn about creating a bar chart in Power BI. So let's start with this. We are going to just create a simple bar chart and for that we need a data set. So just go to get data and choose a format that you have. Here I am using an Excel file. So we'll be importing this Excel file for grocery price data set. Uh, just se select this table and hit the load option if you want to load. Otherwise you can go to transform for changing the values of the columns and so on. You're learning this thing in the later exercise. So here uh, we got this data set and here we got three different columns and we can go to the visualizations to create a chart. So on the first row, we got all the stack, stacked, clustered, bar chart and column charts. So just select any one. Here I'm just using a stacked bar chart and just uh, move the values to different values. Say date to axis, uh, move product column to legend and then price to values. So here we got three data points. So this just create a, a simple bar chart. Here we got four different bars um, and we can change it to represent based on a different time frame. Say on the annual basis, we got one chart. On the quarterly basis, we got two charts. And for the monthly basis, if you want to represent, you can get this thing. And there are four different bars and different colors and the light blue, the dark blue, orange and the violet each representing different category of values or the legions. You can go to the format tab to change a few values. Say if you want to change the value of legion, you can increase the size of legion simply to make them visible to your audience. So here we got four different products, bread, grapes, milk and oranges. So we got the price data of these four food products uh, distributed over month and we can see uh, the price change of each product uh, the simple bar chart. So we can sh simply note here the price of the milk has been increasing over the past few months and the price of oranges have gradually dropped. So the oranges are cheaper in the later months and the milk is more expensive. So we can decide more things. Here we can change the title as well. Just write the price variation over time. You can edit the title. You can change the values. You got multiple formatting options. Just go through them. If you want to change the colors of uh, individual bars, you can change. Say if you want to change the color of bread to lighter tone of blue or say any different color 
uh, yellow, green, purple, anything like that. You can change the color of grapes, uh, anything, any category. Say so change the color of milk to pink, uh, change the color of oranges to yellow. You can change anything. Just make oranges in the orange color and change the color of uh, say grapes to a different color. You can change the value of individual colors. You can change the size for the text. You can change the data colors. You can change uh, different formatting options you got. You got X axis, Y axis. With the different charts, you got uh, different kinds of formatting options. Say a pie chart may have a different formatting option than a bar chart and so on. So you got a, a variety of charts and bar chart would be the first thing that you should try to create. It simply represents uh, four different categories and the price change over the time frame. So bar chart is very useful. So this is how you can create a simple bar chart. If you have a data in different sources, say web data, you can use. Uh, you will learning this thing in the coming lessons. You will also learn about importing other data sets. You can use a database. You can use uh, CSV files. You can use a live data from the web that I mentioned. You will be learning to create uh, different charts, uh, pie charts, tables, tree maps, funnel chart, scatter plot, and other charts. So this is how you create a simple bar chart. Just try to create this thing on your own. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a line chart in Power BI. So let's start with this. Let us first uh, create a line chart using a visualization tab and just use uh, the columns from the sheets. Here I'm just dropping a date column to the axis, product to legends and price to values. So price are the measures that are in numerical values. You can find the sigma sign between that column and you can drop it into the values tab and here we got this simple line chart we can go to the format tab and go to some other options like data labels and we can change the size of this line we can change the size of the text we can perform multiple edits like uh, we can go to the shapes and just change it from the solid line to a dashed line or a dotted line so if you want a dashed line, you can use it to change uh, the shapes of your line or you can use a dotted line to change the value of your dotted line. Otherwise, just keep it uh, solid if you want a straight line without any spaces or dots. Okay, so sometimes you want a projection. You may have different columns and you want a different kind of projection. You want a dotted line as well as a a solid line you can use it you can change the stroke width you can either increase it to have a solid stroke you can decrease it you can change other values you can make it a step so when there is a change of value your line chart will form as a step otherwise it will be constant parallel to x-axis but uh, line charts are generally defined with slopes so if you want to have a slope line chart, you can set it default and turn the step option off. Otherwise, if you want to show in the step manner, it will be a new kind of visualization for some people uh, who just don't want a simple line chart. They want to add some step. Maybe you may want to add a bar chart or some more insights. You can just use a step chart. You can change the title. You can change uh, other text the colors, uh, the legends and anything else. Just uh, say increase the size of the title because by default it is quite small. You can make it large, edit the title, you can write your own text, you can just do any other edits. So this is how you can create a line chart. Uh, just go to the format tabs for multiple options. Say uh, here uh, we got a step option and uh, with the sh different shapes that we can identify. Uh, this option was not available in the bar charts or the pie chart because a bar chart cannot have a step bar. Okay, each individual bar is a different thing. 
and step functionality is only available in the line charts so in the format tab of different charts you will have different options say here it is um, you have to practice by creating multiple charts of different kind and just refer to different formatting options you will learn how to format each individual charts and this is how you can read a chart uh, when you uh, just hover around to the chart uh, with the tooltip if you want to add a tooltip you can also drop something to the tooltip otherwise uh, it will just generate the default values and here you see this thing and this is how you create a simple line chart for some data you don't want to represent it with a bar charts you can represent it with a line charts or a different chart so here we have just taken the same data set created one bar chart and one line chart and now you can decide which chart you want to use for your visualization in some scenarios bar chart would be better sometimes line chart would be better you can use a combination of more charts or create your own custom charts in power bi just keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a pie chart in power bi so let's start with this here let us just uh, import a data set here i'm just importing a billing data set in the excel file and just hit the load button when you want to load the data so it consists of multiple columns with different uh, data values and we'll be using some of them to create a pie chart so just go to the top visualization tab and here you can see a small icon for pie chart just single click it to create this chart once it is created you can expand it and just start dropping the values so here let's drop a product category into legends because it will be represented into categorical forms next use a measure such as order quantity and drop it into the values you can take profit or other numerical value that are represented with a sigma sign here i'm just simply using the order quantity you can add more informations into tool tips and detail sections otherwise just go to the format tab to format different things here let's uh, change the font or you can change the font size say increase the font size of the product categories you can change the font how they are represented sometimes uh, if you are creating a visualization you may uh, require to have a singular kind of format english standards that way you can use otherwise uh, you can use the default power bi font if it doesn't matter to you also if you are using in a different language other than english you can use a font type for that language like a uh, hindi tamil telugu chinese mandarin japanese uh, arabic or a different language of your choice you can use a different formatting next uh, you can change uh, the label positions uh, you can go to the details tab and change the size of the detail text say here uh, we got the label position we can uh, just change the position by default it is represented outside the pie chart you can see uh, the numerical values the percentage and we can just make it uh, appear inside so just go to the label position and you can change it to represent inside outside anywhere you want you can increase the size of the label and how it is represented so this is how if you have a big pie chart it is better to use the inside tab you can also change the label uh, style what information is represented say if you want to show only percentage you can show the percentage if you want to show uh, display the category you can show the category if you want to display a combination of data values category or percentage you can do so or you can simply show all the detailed labels so here i'm just going with a category and a percentage sales in each category and next you can change the color of your data 
uh, data points here uh, we have got multiple categories such as food technology medicines cosmetics and toys uh, let's change the color uh, say convert the food to orange and yellow or orange and technology to blue or a different color you can choose uh, your own favorite color you can use a combination of colors if you are a person who are who is uh, having a background in design or creative field you can use the color wheel or the color palettes if you want to use uh, otherwise just take a color of your choice if you want your uh, diagram to look appealing you can use the concept of color theory that is in practice with the designing persons it is not that difficult just simple thing just a combination of monochromatic or other color schemes this is how with the color data colors you can also change the layout or the style of this entire workspace of power bi and just go to different formatting options such as title you can change the change how your title is displayed you can increase the title size you can keep it centered you can do them some of the formatting options are just common along with uh, different charts such as the title the data colors and other things in different charts and some formatting options are unique say with the pie chart you got this option to show the label position of your text inside the pie chart outside the pie chart it was not visible in the line chart because you cannot simply write a text inside the line you have to write just above the line and so on it will be visible with the bar charts and the ring charts sometimes it won't be visible and here just uh, change the styling of the workspace just go to view and change it to dark mode if you want to have a dark mode you can choose your own style just like a powerpoint presentation will have a different color scheme you can change okay so it will automatically change the data colors of your chart as well if you choose a different color scheme otherwise just go to default normally people go with either of this black or the dark mode or the white mode the default mode okay so you can choose a uh, combination of these things try creating your own visualizations don't worry it is quite simple to start just uh, take a simple data set and start practicing okay no need to worry about anything just give it a practice if you have any doubt feel free to ask in the q and a sections uh, i will be happy to help you out in this situation so just practice this thing create your own pie charts you can create multiple pie charts or a combination of different charts together to create a dashboard you are learning more about uh, creating other charts and other things in power bi till then keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a donut chart or a ring chart in power bi so let's start with this so we have just created a pie chart in the previous lesson and here in order to create a new chart you can either create a new worksheet or you can just create multiple charts on the same worksheet so here i am just creating this ring chart over the top of uh, this pie chart next to it and just reposition it and once you are done you can just drop uh, the values into legends and values uh, the alphabetic values all the categorical data can go to the legion it will be categorized or the numerical value or the measures can go into the values so i'm using order quantity in values and product name into the legion and you can just go to the format tab after you have provided the values so here just format it a little bit we can change the size of the text we can just go to the data labels and go to label styles and choose this to represent with the category and percentage form we don't want the amount to display in this ring chart you can either uh, turn the legend on and off here uh, you can use uh, all kind of categorical data but to make uh, these two charts synchronized together the pi and the ring we just want to have 
these two information name of the category and percentage as these two charts are related because on the pie chart we have used the product category and here in the ring chart we are using subcategory so food is a category that can have a different subcategory fruits vegetables milk uh, and other things in a similar way uh, we can have the categorical and subcategorical segregation so these two charts are related and sometimes if you want to represent a story or uh, something some data we may require one or more charts together to create a dashboard so in order to show the stats or the order quantity by category we have the pie chart and if you want to deep dive into uh, what particular kind of food or the subcategory of food has a maximum order quantity you can refer to the ring chart otherwise in order to have an abstract view you can have um, this pie chart or with a detailed view you can have the ring chart so this is how uh, we can go with this in the pie chart we have put the data inside the label values and now we in the ring chart we put them outside you can change the colors of the data values and align it with the pie chart say with the pie chart we have the food sub food category in the yellow orange color zone and in the sub category you can have a similar tone in order to, to make uh, these two two charts look similar or identical otherwise you can use a different color combination because a category will have fewer entities while the subcategories may have multiple entities or the larger number of entities so the colors should be distinguishable so in the previous lessons uh, be it line chart bar chart or the simple pie chart you learned how to create these individual charts and here you are not just learning how to create a ring chart you are learning how to combine it to present a story and make it aligned so in this way we can have two different charts to have a specific detail about the information uh, you can apply more features that are powered with uh, power bi such as drill down you can add filters later on you're learning everything in this course and here it is uh, it is simple just give it a try take a data set start creating different charts try to link them here i've just taught you how to create two different charts the pie chart and the ring chart in a similar way you can also represent the subcategories uh, with the bar chart or you can also show with the line chart but i believe uh, if you have fewer entities it is better to use line chart otherwise if you have got a lot of data a lot of subcategories here say if you have 20 subcategories understanding 20 lines on the bar on the line chart would be difficult so it is better to use a ring chart there even if you have a bar chart it would be difficult to have a different legend uh, there you need a legend but you still you can represent you can uh, use a different kind of chart you can turn the dark mode on and off you can use a different mode if you want to convey just create a combination of different charts so this is how you create a ring chart and combine it with a dashboard Try to create this thing on your own. Keep learning and keep practicing. Hello, welcome back, friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating a tree map chart in Microsoft Power BI. So let's start with this. Uh, earlier, we have created a pie chart and a ring chart for categories and subcategory. And this time, we are just going to create a tree map chart. So tree map chart is a simple chart uh, which consists of rectangular. Th these are represented with rectangles. Uh, and the area for a particular category will show you the weightage so just realign here I'm just putting country column into the group and order quantity into the values so here we got two countries for our data set United States and Canada so these are represented so as we can see here simply that the maximum orders were placed from United States and from from Canada we have somewhat less number of orders but if you want to re, uh, realign these three charts together or 
create a relationship between the, these three charts together. Uh, no need to worry, these are automatically created. If you create a single worksheet and create multiple charts using the similar data set, it will be uh, interlinked. So if you click on a particular category, everything will be reflected. So first of all, just go to the format tab. Here you can do a few formatting. You can increase the size as we have done with other charts. Uh, you may find some other formatting options. Here, I'll uh, just change the display unit from thousands to auto or anything. If you want to change the display unit of numbers, you can change. You can change the color. Uh, you can change the labels or uh, data labels. You can turn the legend on and off. Uh, so let's change the color. Here, United States is represented with blue color and Canada as red. So just place them around. Uh, you can always readjust the charts as you like. So you can just make this ring chart a little bit smaller and just increase the size of our tree map chart. So it aligns perfectly well. So here we got uh, three different charts. So when we click on a particular option in any of the chart, say in the tree map, we click United States option. Uh, all other charts, the pie chart and the ring chart will be updated. So once we click United States, as you can see, uh, other charts are shrink. This is a powerful animation in Power BI. So we can find in the United States, maximum orders were placed for the food category, uh, less proportion for medicines, more proportion for cosmetics. 100% of the cosmetics order were placed from United States. So we can see that no cosmetic order was placed from Canada. And when you click over the Canada, you can find Canadians tend to order more medicines than food. So this is how you can drive the insights. So once you click on a particular category, you can either just select food and find uh, which country uh, have the maximum proportion of food or technology. Say just click on any of the category or subcategory. Uh, you can click anywhere on the chart to exit or say just select Canada. Here we find that uh, Canadians order less fruit as compared to uh, dairy products and vegetables and the United States maximum number of food fruits were ordered from US. So in the similar way, this is a dummy data. This is not the real data. So don't worry. This is not the difference between United States and Canada. We are taking a subset of a uh, few peoples and this is a dummy data for practice. Okay. So just select a particular category. Here we select uh, say fruits. So you can see uh, United States have maximum order for fruits when compared to Canada. Uh, when you select medicines, Canadians tend to buy more medicines than United States. And this is how you drive the business insights. So you have multiple data set. You just don't need to read the tables and go through everything. You can create multiple charts in an attractive manner. So this is how it is. It looks very attractive. Power BI makes it feel very attractive. Okay. When you present this thing in a conference or with uh, teams or collaborators, they will feel uh, amazed with this visuals. So just use these charts and create amazing visuals. Just create a tree map and interact with other charts such as pie, ring and line charts. So keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating tables and matrices in Power BI. So let's start with this. The tables uh, generally represent data in two dimensional values and you can only add column in two tables of Power BI. So as you can see here, you got only one option values. You can add any column to the values, be it uh, a measure or dimension, alphabetic or numerical value. You can use it. So here, just let me drop product category here. You can add more uh, columns into this table anytime you want. So we got formatting options. We can change the size and appearance. You can change the style to contrast alternative rows or have anything else. Later on, we can just add uh, more columns such as order quantity and profit. And after we have created this table, you can also create a matrix. Both are different. Sometimes you can use either of them or you can combine both of them. 
but uh, let me just tell you a difference between table and matrix table is simple 2d representation of data where you can only add column in power bi and matrices are similar to pivot table in excel if you have used microsoft excel previously uh, you may have used pivot table and in the pivot table we got the two dimensions but uh, we can add rows columns as well as values and it can be used for a drill down uh, and you can apply drill down functionality very easily into matrices okay here you get the option to add rows columns and values and we can classify so in the table we got only values and in the matrix we got row column and values and it helps you access uh, deeper levels of hierarchy for a data set visually and you can examine something in further details our uh, drill down allows you to do that so this is a simple table now let us just create a matrix we can change the size and just keep it on the left hand side for reference here we got product category order quantity and profit we have turned the title bar off so simply we can see this uh, useful information next just click uh, on creating a matrix it is next to the table and you can see here we got three options for rows, columns, and values. Let us drop a few columns from the table or data set. Sorry, uh, we have the states and we'll just put it into the rows, product category into the column, and values into profit. One thing uh, you can uh, note here that you may put multiple measure or dimension into either of these things. So, as in tables, we have added three columns into the values you can add multiple values in rows multiple values in columns as well as multiple uh, values in values and here it is we have just added profit to values and you can see you got one column for profit later on we can add uh, some more information like total price you can find that a uh, few of the cells are empty so we don't have any corresponding data for that particular cell maybe that is the case but you can add more columns here okay so just try to add total price into the values and here you can see the total price as well as profit is added to each column so here you got column and you got sub columns so Matrix is an advanced computation. Sometimes you have multi-dimensional data. You can use matrix to represent. Just as a mathematical matrix, you get three dimension, four dimension, or a higher dimension computation. You can represent using matrix, where something table, simple table, cannot fit a lot of data. Just go to the formatting tab to format the matrix as you format other charts. You can have a minimal styling, contrast, alternative rows, sparsing, or a flashing rows. Let us choose a flashing rows, so it looks uh, visually good. So here on the left hand side we got a small table, and on the right hand side we got a detailed matrix. Sometimes there could be information that cannot be simply represented with a pie or the bar chart or any other chart you may require matrices still it can allow you to drill down or drill up and add filters and advanced functionalities you can add slicers and anything else that you will be learning in the coming lessons so here you learned how to create a table and a matrix in power bi so this can allow you to represent data try to create your own matrix multi-dimensional matrix or a simple two-dimension table try to add different values uh, measures or dimensions into multiple columns rows and values you can use a data set and just try to create this thing keep learning and keep moving ahead in the previous lesson we have just created a table and a matrix and now in this lesson you're going to learn about implementing this drill down functionality on table and matrix so let's start so what is drill down simply drill down allows you to access deeper level of hierarchies of a data set visually 
So when we click on a particular row or column, say technology uh, in table, it will update the mattress only for the technology. In the similar way, if we choose say California uh, from the mattress, it will only highlight the relevant information in table. So if you want to dive deeper into a particular category or entity, a particular thing and get a relevant information for that thing, we can find out. Just keep it simple. Say the product category, order, quantity or profit details are shown in the table. Uh, and by default, it shows the entire state or from the United States and Canada, all the profit combined together in the food category, cosmetics and medicines, technology. But if we select a particular state, it will only update uh, information for that state. In the same way, if we choose a particular category, it will update uh, only this particular category information in the mattress. Here, let us create one more uh, chart. This time, uh, a column, uh, a pie chart, and just put a country into the legend and order quantity into the values. So here we find a simple pie chart, and we can also format it further, but let it be. Uh, we are focused on drilling down. So here we got three charts. Uh, these are connected together with each other because we have the similar data set. And when we click, say, select uh, Canada. It will show you the information only for the Canada. Both tables and matrices are updated and will show you only the information for the Canada. So this is a drill down technique based on multiple charts. Say if you select a food, it will only show the food data for US and Canada. So in the pie chart, you find this relevant information highlighted on, on the right hand side in the matrix you find that particular information is highlighted. So if you want to focus or target on the particular category, say geographical location or a particular category, product category, you can just focus on that product line. Okay. So you may update with the relevant information. Say if you are making a presentation with your peers, uh, colleagues, you have a data sales data for different states and say somebody popped up and said, uh, let me focus just on California into the technology sector. So you can select, just uh, hold the control click, control key uh, on the keyboard and the single click, or you can select multiple columns or categories with the mouse and control. So this way you can focus on a combination of things. Okay, it will show you the relevant information. It makes life very easy and drill down is really useful. Rather than creating different tables or different charts for a particular solution, it may take time, but here you drill down in the real time without uh, requiring to create separate charts and you can just focus on things that matter. Try to create this thing on your own. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating an amazing uh, chart in Power BI, that's ribbon chart. So here we need a new data set. Uh, we are just importing this grocery price uh, Excel data set. You can use any other data source like database or web data or PDF or a different format of data. You got a lot of formats and uh, you can use cloud services and other services as well. So here just uh, refer to the data set that are you using and hit the load option. So what is a ribbon chart? A ribbon chart is a creative way of visualizing the stack data that you can also create with a stack column chart but here uh, we want to align them based on the ranks and uh, we want to see the flow of the ranks say sometimes one category is on the top so you can get maximum sales or something from uh, that category on the next month or next quarter it has changed the rank so we can find the flow of orders or rank of this stacked information. Here data category uh, are arranged on the highest value. So highest values on the top and it changes with the access you provide here. We will be using the time. So you can find the ribbon chart on the right hand side for the second row in the visualization tab. Here you can create this uh, ribbon chart visualization and you you got a little idea how it will going to be look and here just uh, navigate through 
these options you got access and just put date into access and price into the values so values is a measure based on that we will get rank for the orders next uh, we take the date for the access and for the legion we got products so it consists of three dimensions uh, the x-axis is based on a date you can take a different time frame here it is showing the annual time frame you can just cross it to remove it so when you cross year it will show the quarter when you cross the quarter it will show you the monthly data so it depends on if you have a annualized data you can use that if you have a monthly or quarterly data you can use it if you have a daily data you can have this thing you can also convert it to weekly information and so on so this is a flow and you can go to the format tab to add some details like turn the data labels on so it will add the data labels uh, that are relevant say order quantity or here we got the price it will show you the sum of price by default you can change it to average account or any other parameter uh, you can also find the median or other things you can increase the text size of uh, data labels as well as title or, or legion anything else here we got four different categories bread grapes milk and oranges and you can find the data arranged on the five month cycle on the first month we got uh, uh, this milk to be on the top and it is constantly on the top based on the price okay so it is on the top uh, first rank and the second rank uh, we got this bread and it is on second rank for three months and then it's dropped with the formatting you can also turn the spacing between these ribbons you can increase the spacing you can decrease the spacing based on your requirement on the third category we got uh, this uh, oranges and the grapes we can find this thing and it changes the values you can also add an image to the background or you can turn the mode into the dark mode or the background you can change the styling you got other formatting options as well like shadows highlights tooltips you can also add some information in the tooltip if you got multiple measures like order quantity profit uh, loss uh, anything any more numerical value you can also add on into the tooltips or you can also show it into the values just remember you can add multiple columns uh, into the values or any other axis you can also change the color as you want let's change the color of orange to orange and we find the grapes has successfully grown so initially the grapes was in the last category and in the preceding uh, coming months it grew to the third and the second category so we can identify the trend the flow of rank here uh, which category jump to the higher rank and which category move to the lower rank you can simply identify uh, with this ribbon chart so sometimes you may require a ribbon chart say if you're running a company or you have multiple units or you may have uh, different streams uh, you can find where the traffic is coming it can be used for analyzing uh, traffic any kind of content that can be categorized and has to represent in the flow or the ranked manner so this is how you create a ribbon chart and here you can do comparative analysis it can be also used for applying drill down functionality you can change uh, simply change the values here uh, on the axis we got date if you want to see the quarterly data we can just turn the year off and we can find this quarterly data so you can find the quarterly data uh, you can find the monthly data daily and the weekly if you require so based on the data set you can also combine it with other charts to have a drill down functionality you can create it to uh, create an amazing dashboard for driving insights or you can create multiple worksheets for different versions so just try creating a ribbon chart uh, just use any kind of data you have that you want to arrange in the trend manner you want uh, in terms of order or the ranks 
the systematic way and you want to have this flow. Don't be confused with the Sankey chart. It is different from the ribbon chart. Uh, this is a ribbon chart. It has a different purpose and the Sankey chart is a different thing. Okay. So ribbon chart allows you to show information visually uh, with ranks and orderly fashion. And with the Sankey chart, you have the flow from one direction to other dimension. Uh, say you can use for the climate change data, say the source and destination, you can connect those information, but ribbon chart don't do that thing. So Sankey chart is a more advanced version. In Power BI, we don't get Sankey chart by default and it's really used uh, for simple corporate presentations. You can use a ribbon chart for a lot of functionalities. It is attractive because a lot of tools out there like Tableau don't have a Sankey, uh, don't have a this ribbon chart by default, but Power BI support this thing. So if you are a Power BI user, you should appreciate this thing. So just create a ribbon chart and visualize your information uh, creatively. Try to create this thing on your own. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating a slicer in Power BI. So what is a slicer? A slicer is a kind of filter that provides you multiple options in form of checkboxes where you can select a particular option and that will be used as a filter criteria to modify your visualization. Here we have the simple visualization of this table and here uh, we can create a slicer and we can drop any field here. So just drop country into the field or you can add states. So when we have the country, we got checkbox with country name. And when we expand it, we also get the states name. So these two columns are related. So when we select a particular uh, checkbox, say a particular state in Canada, like Ontario, Quebec, Alberta, it will show you information regarding to that states only. You can also select multiple columns, uh, multiple checkboxes by holding the control key on the keyboard and just single click on a particular column. You can also select uh, states from other options. Say in the US, you can select New York, New Mexico, Idaho, Illinois, uh, different states. You can use uh, this kind of a slicer to create a filter to show you information relevant to that particular state. Say uh, currently you have the sales data for all over the country in the US and Canada. But when you want a specific data for a particular state, uh, you can create a slicer rather than creating multiple charts. It is uh, sometimes useful to create a slicer. So it is a basic kind of filter. You can create a slicer for date, time. You're learning that thing in next lesson. But uh, you can also create a slicer for a variety of things. Say if you have uh, various kind of categories and subcategories, it can be used to dive into deeper. Say if you have a category like technology, food, uh, different categories in the continent, you can just divide. So. There is no limit to imagination and you can use a lot of things. Uh, you can also create uh, various filters, uh, advanced filters, but to be useful, a slicer would work in a lot of scenario. You can uh, format these slicers just like you format uh, the general charts and the visualizations. Just go to the format tab and you will get multiple options that you can play with. So this is how you create a simple slicer. Uh, you can also select multiple fields, multiple columns. You can also create multiple slicers on the same chart. So whenever you create a slicer with the same data set, uh, where, which is used to create a visualization in your Power BI dashboard, the slicer get automatically linked to your chart. So you can use a slicer with multiple charts or a combination of charts as well. So try to create your own slicer and use it with the various charts in Power BI. Till then, keep learning and keep moving ahead. 
Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you are going to learn about creating a date slicer in Power BI. In the previous lesson, you learned to create a basic slicer and here just moving forward with a new slicer. You can use this slicer as a filter. So let us first create a slicer. Just go to the visualization and in the lower row, you got this option. So just click it. So here uh, we will be dropping order date into the field. So when we drop order date, it will fetch uh, year, month and date data and it will show you a slicer, a slider by default. So here you got two points, the starting date and end date. So you can select a range of dates by just moving two points of the slicer. So if you want to select uh, say one week, 10 days or any amount of day starting from say 25th March or 11th December ending date you can select or you can just click on a particular date to select a custom date okay so you got two options you can slice uh, you can slide or you can just go to a particular date year and month just like you do in any web page so it is very cool thing you can just create uh, this date a slicer and just keep it in the side of a visualization and when you're showing your presentation you can use the basic slicer as a filter for categories and date or time slicer to select a time frame so let us first also create one more date slicer you can create a date slicer in two ways just uh, go to this option and you can select date hierarchy so it will show you date in terms of check boxes arranged in a hierarchy or categories and subcategory format so you can select them just like a basic slicer so you got years quarters when you expand a quarter you will get months you can expand a month to get a, a particular date and so on so you can use a combination of a slider uh, the date hierarchy and the basic slicer to just navigate through your visualization. People generally do uh, drill down in charts. Uh, you can use drill down, but when you require a filter or particularly a slicer, you can just create these things. So these are very empowering things. Uh, it may look like they are very simple, but once you combine them, with the charts that you create, all the charts, uh, tree map, pie, bar, line, any map chart or a combination of custom charts, it will simply take your visualization to the next level with very ease. Say if you have a visualization for sales data across a region and your client asks, uh, your friend asks simply, now I want to get the sales data of Texas from July 2019 to February 2021. You can just use these two slicers and navigate through the exact data a person is asking for. Alternatively, when we use a database a query language, SQL can be used for performing such kind of query, but here we have the power to show it visually in real time without writing any script or query. So slicers are very powerful filters that can be used with your charts for real-time query handling. So try to create your own slicers and integrate with your charts to create an amazing story. So stay motivated, try to create these kind of filters, slicers and charts in Power BI. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hey, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you are going to learn about exporting a subset of chart data into csv file so let's start with this so we have created multiple visualization charts uh, here we have the pie chart ring chart or tree map chart and we can export a subset of data say if we select a particular option from either of the chart and uh, we can extract relevant information say if we want to know uh, data only for the united states or simply canada or a simple category we have to just select the chart select the particular section and right click on show data point as a table 
so it will generate a table for the data points here we have selected the fruits category so it have just created the data for fruits in the same way we can select any other thing say technology so it will show you the data uh, for the sheet just for the technology category it will leave all other categories uh, ignore all other categories and will sh show you this information so in case if you need any particular information you have a large data set and you want to filter it on this point you can do this thing and you can also export it into the csv just go to the more options on the top right corner and hit export data just provide the name for your csv file uh, comma separated value or you can also save it into the spreadsheet or any other format of your choice by default people generally use csv file because it gets easily connected with a web data a databases a cloud data and other visualization tools so here we have so this is how you can just view a particular segment of data you can have the charts you can select a particular segment of the chart you can extract the data and export it and save it for further analytics it is vital because uh, say if you're working in a team and you have created a visualization and your uh, friends or collaborators want a particular chunk say they want only the technology data or they want uh, you have a team for different divisions say us west us east us north us south and you want to provide them with the data relevant to their, their domains their specializations their areas uh, so you can just extract that chunk of data very easily in power bi create a spreadsheet and share with them so they can perform further more analytics uh, that are relevant to their case or for any other reasons so this is how you can extract data and export in csv keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about using live web data and use it in power bi so let us first search something on internet uh, say just search for biggest forest area on wikipedia where we are using the wikipedia as a source of information here we can find the countries and the continents with the largest forest areas and the changes of forest area over the year so we just want to create a, a visualization on this data so this data is not stored in any excel file for in our computer so we can just go to get data and hit the web icon a web option and here you have to provide the url for the web page or the website you want to extract data so just provide this url for this web page and here uh, all the extracted tables from that web page will be in front of you so you can select any table you can select a, a particular table or you can select a group of tables and hit load or it is better to go to transform option so it will open the query editor dashboard and here you can optimize or just change the data in the way you want so here uh, basically i want to just rename the columns so it's better to first uh, change the name of the column uh, you can change the values you can round off the values say if your values are in billions millions you can uh, add some commas you can remove delimiters you can change it to your format you can remove the null values you can remove the redundant rows anything so here just change the value here uh, we write the year wise data so we change the column title to year say 1990 2000s 2020s and so on so here we have just changed and next you can uh, go to this uh, remove rows and remove top rows here you have to provide the number of rows that you want to remove so if you write one uh, the first top row will be removed okay so here we remove first top row because that was redundant uh, we don't require that row in our column data because when we are comparing continents or countries we don't need the world data because it will graph 50 percent because it consists of some of all the values we don't want we can remove or we can remove the title as well 
so you can change and when you right click a particular cell you can also re uh, rename the values say north america and central america we can simplify it with north and central america so america was repeated we can reduce it to one time people will understand it easily so when you are visualizing something you want a short and crisp data where all other continents are named with a single word this a uh, particular option had four words so we don't want this thing so here uh, we have this table and once you're done you can save it and here we can create any kind of visualization you can create a tree map you can create a ring chart pie chart anything you want so here if we create a tree map we can just add something some values like in groups we can add region and in values we can add data uh you can add uh, here we have data for a particular year you can add it or you can create a ring chart and here you can see first row is redundant the world data world is not a continent so it is better to remove it so we will again go to the query editor back to the query editor and we can transform this data further so just select the query data set and you can go to the query editor uh, this is the option here when you are not sure your data is filtered enough you can just remove some things and you can edit it you just right click the query editor uh, you have this option so just go to uh, remove rows and hit the remove top rows here we will removing the first row and this is so earlier uh, we could have removed two rows but uh, if you say uh, if you start editing something creating visualization even is still at that point of time you feel like your data is not accurate you want to add something this phase is widely used uh, in data science and machine learning projects and this is called uh, this is a component of feature engineering okay because uh, you have a big data set and you want to just in a step wise manner over a period of time you want to filter some of the components you want your data to be more realistic more uh, reliable so at every step you are just altering some data sets so here it is uh, we have created a ring chart for the same data and here you got the data for year 1990s in the similar way we can if you want to compare we can do it in a different way we can create a line chart we can create multiple ring charts we can do anything like that so here for the first of all uh, just uh, create a ring chart and here it is forest cover for 1990 you can go to the format editing tab format tab and change the label type perform any edits that you want you can just uh, make your data look live you already know how to create these kinds of charts ring charts and anything else this is the first time you see the query data you can perform uh, various edits in your data set you can use the web data and use it as it is uh, stored in your excel file or database so try to cre uh, create uh, this live web, web data extraction keep learning and keep moving ahead hi there welcome to this lesson where you are going to learn about importing a file in tableau the so tableau allows you to do various kinds of visualization and it's important to know what kinds of files it can import so it can import uh, excel text json access file pdf spatial statistical and other files as well it can import uh, various kind of databases you got a lot of variety of databases from sql no sql databases uh, oracle database amazon redshift and uh, different cloud databases apache databases and various other options you can also import google analytics and various other uh, data sources into tableau so tableau is a very powerful data visualization tool that can allow you to import data in various structured or semi structured format that you can use here and sometimes on structured as well so you can import a variety of databases if you have a database you can add uh, currently i have this excel file and you import a excel file or csv file you can go for our excel and hit the import we got this table so you can see uh, after we imported a file the all the content 
uh, in that table uh, is visible this option so all the columns uh, the rows are clearly visible you can also uh, edit some values here you can uh, perform some edits uh, some operations like uh, data cleaning and change the values of individual uh, sales individual uh, columns and rows uh, like you do in the excel file also you can open an excel file as well and sometimes data could be unarranged and you can use the data interpreter to uh, remove certain irregularities from the table or from the data source and it will be interpreted easily uh, null values will be removed and similar thing will be removed null values are just empty cells that does not have any value in it so after we got this table the next step is to create a sheet uh, sh in the sheet we will be able to do any kind of operation and visualization you can change the number of columns a uh, number of rows that has been imported from the table say if you don't provide any value it will import every web field but if you provide any value say 5 10 it will only import the those particular rows so sometimes you could have a large chunk of data and you don't want to add all the rows in the database so you can go with this so when you go to the sheets uh, it will have you some thing like this on the right hand side you got various kinds of charts that you can create on the left hand side you got uh, two columns here the dimension and the measures these are just uh, columns uh, from the table or from the spreadsheet that has been extracted here so the numerical values go in the measures and non-numerical values go in the dimension you can always convert these values you will learn in the later lessons and you can drag and drop measures or dimensions into the co column and row field and it will generate a simple chart so right now we got a bar chart and you can change the value to different charts say tree map or the circular charts circle pie charts you could have different kinds of chart as well on the right hand side it will also show you which kind of chart can be created using the parameters that you provide in rows and columns so don't be confused just get familiar with the interface of tableau you will be working uh, everything in this interface okay so if you are scared right now don't worry just go to the tableau interface and add a data source such as excel sheet and start creating some rows columns some charts and get familiar to it so after you have created a chart or visualization in tableau it's better to save that file uh, to avoid data loss your excel file will be intact but uh, you want to save a visualization and it can be done in tableau format later on you can also convert it to images or other formats as well just save your file provide any name it will be saved with twb file format and hit ok so you will be learning more about tableau in the coming lessons keep learning keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about various chart types in tableau so let's start so in the previous lesson we have created a simple packed bubble chart and we got various columns and rows defined here you can remove by right clicking and hit the remove so next uh, we need to create a chart from fresh so here we take the order quantity in row and profit and column uh, it will automatically generate uh, some of these values as they are numerical values or measures next we can add a uh, total price uh, to rows or column so we can create various kinds of chart on the right hand side you got uh, the charts enabled that can have this uh, number of rows and column so some charts could be created by one column and one row some charts require two columns some requires three columns and so on so you can try different visualizations by combining a number of dimensions and measures defined as rows and columns so when you right click a value in row or column you can change the sum to average median 
distinct variance or any other value you can choose to do it will only affect the numerical values so if you have say profit you can create sum of profit you can create average profit median you can count different profits count distinct values of profits a lot of operations can be performed here so it is a very important thing that you can do and once you don't need any column or row or you have chosen by mistake or sometimes you require a different kind of visualization you can easily right click remove and adding a column and row is very easy and intuitive you can just drag a dimension or measure on this column and row values so let's try different charts here you can got uh, the tree map the bar chart the pie chart you got the horizontal bar chart the histogram box and visor uh, pack bubble charts highlights and tables stack bar chart the map and different other charts so you can try different visualizations on the values sometimes you can also create uh, the map chart you are learning in the coming lesson and here uh, we got this different values say you can drop some values of uh, invoice or order quantity and you can define so when you are beginning you can combine different value first you need to learn how to work in tableau so we focused on that point later on you can focus on creating a simple meaningful visualization so uh, sometimes we could have different kinds of parameters uh, say here we got a bar chart which have different values colored in a long chart and we can simplify this chart by applying using different cards so here we got different cards like color size and label uh, you can drop any measure or dimension on these cards to impact the graph so when we drop any value in the size it will decrease or increase the value of the components in the chart as well so you can combine a variety of chart this is the pack bubble chart and sometimes uh, it helps in visualization various organizations like that show the climate change use a creative chart you can also create your own custom chart uh, that will be advanced part and you can also filter out various components so here we got different components or uh, legends on the right hand side and you can enable or disable anything like that so you can hide these chart options on the chart panel on the right hand side and you got this thing also you can create filters and other things so just practice take any csv file excel file or any database and just try creating different charts using a combination of measures and dimensions so sometimes you may wonder uh, that your charts and rows column look empty but it is not empty it, it, the values have gone to the cards category cards panel and it depends on the chart so it will allow you to add some more components to the rows and columns so this is how you create uh, different charts and visualizations in tableau so don't try to master everything in your first attempt take multiple attempts uh, but first be focused on learning the interface as a whole uh, get familiar yourself with creating different charts and other options in tableau keep learning hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn to create map visualization in tableau maps allow you to create amazing visualization where you have geographic data to represent so here i will be dragging this country dimension on the row and the profit measure on the column so this will help us to create a map so we need one parameter for the geographic value and another can represent any numerical value or anything else so here uh, we have created a map of north america containing data information from us and canada so here we can uh, double click state or country or any other property like city it will be represented in the map but 
it will have a dotted kind of view. So in order to have a clear view, we can drag the value of order quantity or any other numerical value to the color. So all the states or any entity in case uh, we have classified data in form of states, you could have in, in form of cities or anything like that, they will be colored in different way. So here we have a monochromatic color scheme. So it will have a different shades of same color. So the darker the color, the more profit, uh, the more order quantity is represented. You can drag any numerical value like dimension to the color. And here uh, when we drag any other property, say states to the label, uh, all states will be displayed with a text on them. You can always remove any cards or any other property in Tableau by just right clicking and remove. And you can drag same properties multiple times in different cards. You got uh, different cards like color, size, label and more. So you could add a tooltip, you could add a color. So when you drag any property to the color, it will affect the color. Say if you drag the order quantity, uh, the higher order will be represented with the darker color and the less order will be represented in brighter color. So here we can conclude that Texas has higher order quantity as compared to California in this case. You could have different values and we have dragged the label, uh, the states in the label. When you double click on any property, any cards, you will get options. Say you can change the color property. You can change it to pink, magenta, purple, any other color. There are various color combination options and you can also choose a custom color as you wish. And here you can change the color scheme. So you can go with uh, any color scheme that you want, but sometimes uh, if you choose uh, multiple color scheme, it would be a little bit confusing. In order to have uh, some situations like heat map, you could show some parameters as warm colors and some with cold colors. You could have an intensity mark as well. So let's go with any color here. Let's keep it purple. It will allow you to visualize in simple ways. You could create uh, different kinds of map presentation. Uh, you can create map with a tableau public and desktop both alike. When your data is uh, spread across the globe, you could focus on certain things as well. And if it is concentrated in a particular state or a district, it will be also represented as well. So geographical data are critical to visualization and sometimes it is better to visualize in form of map. You can always combine a combination of other charts as well like bar chart, uh, wrap bubble charts and area chart and other chart as well along with this map chart in the dashboard and the story. So you'll be learning more in the coming lessons and this is map. Just keep it go and try creating a map visualization. The steps are simple. You need to drag a country, the state uh, or a district or any other geographical property to column or row and just drag any numerical value to another column or row. So now this is time for you to practice creating a map visualization. Just use any geographical data, provide some numerical value and plot it in Tableau. To practice, keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, we are going to learn about converting measures to dimension and dimensions to measure and few other properties. So earlier we have created a map visualization and we got various dimensions and measures here. So uh, what changes in properties of each individual measures and dimensions can be performed? You have to learn here. So just select any dimension and just right click. You got various options here. You can change a data type or you can change the default properties like let's change the format of date. So here you got uh, multiple formats that can be used to format a date. 
it could be month day and year or just month and year and anything like that you can also apply for formatting to time and other values as well next you can uh, get uh, various options here you can convert uh, a discrete value to continuous continuous to discrete and so on and you can convert uh, a measure to dimensions a measure is generally a numerical value and numerical value can be stored in dimension as well uh, but you cannot convert uh, text information in dimensions to measures although uh, when once a numerical value is been converted to dimension you can flip back again to measures when you try to convert any dimension with text information to measures it will be by default stored as a count value so it will sum up the values keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend uh, here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating multiple worksheets in tableau so earlier you ha know how to create a sheet and add a visualization and different kinds of graphs so if you want to create multiple worksheets you can do it very easily just go to lower left side and you can you got three options first is to create a worksheet second is to create a dashboard and then to create a story so a dashboard is a combination of multiple worksheets so before heading to create a dashboard it's better to create multiple worksheets so this is our second worksheet and here uh, we can add uh, different informations like here we create a map visualization using some geographical properties and numerical properties okay you can drag any dimension or measures to different kinds of marks uh, color size label tooltip or you can drop to rows and columns and next create more worksheets as you want so in a dashboard you can accommodate uh, four to five worksheets very easily and effectively although you can add more worksheets but uh, in order to grab some great attention it's better to go with a appropriate number of worksheets okay so here we can create different uh, visualizations you can uh, use the same data set to drag different kinds of insights generally speaking uh, data sets are large they contain a large value of rows and columns so you can create different visualization so here uh, you can create visualization for number of product sales based on the geography in the states where the products are sold maximum you can create a pie chart representing uh, various segments of products or it's better to go with a bubble wrap chart because it helps uh, get analysis very clearly when you have to compare uh, quantities based on profit or anything you can use this bubble wrap chart so when we drop the number of quantities in the size card it will filter out each category based on the number of quantities sold so food has been sold in the larger quantity so it has been displayed or you can press press control z or add anything you could add more information to the tooltip so it will generate a tooltip okay so just get back and here's the visualization where everything is arranged based on the profit generated so the technology segment has generated a larger profit when compared to food so you can create some visualizations like this hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a dashboard in tableau so what is dashboard dashboard allows you to add different visualizations or worksheets in a single page view so it will be easy for anyone to convey different visualizations and draw insights from the data set and present it to a higher authority or somebody that you want to present so here uh, we need to create a dashboard in the same way that we created a worksheet so creating a dashboard option is next to creating a worksheet and you can add multiple worksheets here just hold the worksheet and drag on the screen so here uh, we got three different worksheets map dual axis chart and the bubble chart so we can drag on the screen 
So this is a dashboard and it will have different data on the similar page. You can readjust the size of uh, each chart or visualization and adjust them accordingly the way you want. So if you have got uh, two different entities, different visualizations, you can represent them side by side or you can add a third and a fourth layer on the lower side or anywhere else. You could also hide certain visualizations and show them when they are required. Okay, if you have multiple charts or worksheets, say 10, 12, 15, and at a time you want to represent only three, just add everyone and just expand anything the way you want when you are required. But we got only three charts here, so we can adjust them. Uh, we would require for map to be large. Bubble chart can be shown in a smaller area as well. So we can adjust it accordingly. If you want to add some filters, you could always add a filter to the dashboard. So filters allow you to dive deeper inside to draw more insights into particular things. Say here in map, we got that uh, the states that have a maximum amount of product sold. So here we got California and Texas have more order quantity. But if you want to uh, dive deeper into Texas, that in Texas, what cities uh, were responsible for the sales, we can drive in this. So here we got a dual axis chart. We can always turn anything on and off, like bar charts. You can make them visible or just make them transparent or any values. So you will learning this thing later on. First, first uh, rename everything. Uh, you can rename the entire dashboard each visualization by providing appropriate names. So here uh, we got uh, the profit versus quantity visualization. So just press OK. So first dual axis chart uh, will represent the profit versus quantity. So adding a name uh, will add some more information. So you can just directly de drive to the main point. Don't need to explain everything from scratch. This uh, visualization using dashboards look very appealing to a large set of audience and it will make your data or the insights or the idea that you want to convey very easily to explain to a larger set of audience. Okay, The people who are not just uh, experts in data, understanding data and the mathematicians and things like that, you can explain it to everyone. So here, just rename things here. And you got various objects here that you can apply as well. Uh, dashboard have its own features. You can set uh, different worksheets here. You can also set the layout and different panel. Just rename a uh, dashboard, the entire theme of this presentation. So this is a sales dashboard. So it could be for a company that runs a business and have the sales across Canada and the USA they want to focus on their future products. So here on the right hand side with the bubble chart, we know that the technology segment is working very well. You can just click on any states in the map to get some more information with tooltips. If you have set the tooltips, okay, you can set the technology and you can set tooltips to any kind of charts, bar, uh, dual axis, map, bubble, and uh, tree map, anything you want to add. You will be adding filters to dive into deeper. So here it is a simple presentation. So try creating your own dashboard. Create all the reports from scratch. Use any data or create your own data set and start querying. Be a data science enthusiast. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about using a map as a filter in Tableau dashboard. So we have created a dashboard and we, we got uh, three different visualizations, bar chart, the bubble and the map. So just go to map and on the right hand side, you got various options. The third option, you got this funnel icon. Just click on that to enable using map as a filter. So when you uh, point towards a particular state on the map, 
all the data will be updated on the st states. So here when we press the Texas or Quebec or California, the information will be only provided for the state. So here we can clearly say that in the California technology segment work very well. But in the New York segment, we got the food worked well. Here no sale was recorded for the technology segment. When we go to the queue back in the Canada, the technology is again the lead. Ontario and other states, we can find the insights. So in different states. So just select any particular state and all the chart on the sides of this dashboard. This is a bar chart, the bubble chart. If you have pie chart, area chart, tree map, everything will be updated and map will be used as a filter. So you can clearly identify and dive deeper into your data. So earlier we got the complete overview of every states and the complete region. But right now we can drive deeper. So in the different states of Florida, we can find that twice I have more sales than any other thing. So California, uh, Florida is an outlier in this scenario. So we can focus on creating twice for California. A similar way, you can drag the insights, to identify the customer behavior and all the parameters that are working in a particular location. In a similar way, you can use a different thing as a filter. If your bubble chart can be used for a filter, if you select a technology segment, everything like in the map or on the chart, only the technology segment will be highlighted. So just create a dashboard and apply filters. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, we are going to learn about creating custom filter in Tableau. Earlier, uh, we have used a map as a filter. Uh, when we selected a particular state, it will filter out everything else. But here, uh, we want to create a custom filter based on dates, year, weekend and so on. So we can do so by just going to the worksheet. Here, I will be going to this map worksheet a map visualization and here uh, we'll be dropping different uh, fields in different cars earlier you know how to use the color size and label cards you can drop measures to label uh, when you drop to the label it will be visible on the map you can add to tooltip when it, you want to hover around so here just select your order date and drop it to the filter and here you got various options just select a year so it will be creating a filter based on the years so we have a range of years from 2016 to 19 hit ok when you are done and you need to right click and show filter so on the right hand side you can see this these are the filters by default everything is checked but you can filter out uh, the sales data or anything based on the parameter the filters say if you uh, selected only 2019 it will show you the data from 2019 sales record from 2017 and so on the year you selected in a similar way we can create based on a particular date different months we can you can also add timing if you have that in your record and you can use it as a filter parameter not every data has to be visualized but it can be used as a filter as well. So if you want to add more date values like uh, weekdays, days of the week, you can drop it again. Uh, there is no limit for applying filters only once. You can apply multiple kinds of filters. So here just uh, sh show it again. Just hit click and here we can select everything. Say if you want to select all the sales data from 2016 and 19 where days were Sunday and Saturday and Friday. So the weekends, it will show you the data. You can select anything uh, based on the day, a particular date, anything. You can also add uh, different kinds of filters like color filters and everything else. Here we got uh, a specific state. And when you got uh, this filter, you can add to the dashboard as well. So it will be reflecting to other parameters, other visualizations. So just do the same thing. Go to dimension, measures, drop any field to the filter that you want to add. You can add numerous filters. 
okay so here i've chosen the date you can add the price you could add the quantity of orders you can filter out anything like if uh, the order sale is more than 10,000 units per annum it will show you on the screen or in the similar way you could add different kind of things so you have to just update it in a dashboard if you want to add the filter you just need to update or either you can remove the worksheet and add it again so it will create a filter will be visible to your and it's always better to add filters to your dashboard visualizations so when you are presenting your insights to someone uh, you can search anything at the moment keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about adding filters to your presentation in dashboard so in the earlier lesson we have created a worksheet with map visualization our map chart where we have created two different filters as you can see on the right hand side so both are date based filters one uh, can be done with uh, days of the week monday tuesday wednesday and so on and one is based on the annual basis 2016 2017 18 and 19 so we can add the same filters from our worksheet to the dashboard so first you need to update or just delete the earlier worksheet and then add the updated worksheet so this updated worksheet comes with uh, the filters as well and you can separately reposition the filters on the dashboard so here just adjust your map so that uh, each thing would be visible clearly and you can see just next to the bubble chart uh, these are the filters the date filters you can just hold and drag to the place so sometimes if you have multiple filters you can also add position or uh, place them in the proper location on the dashboard there is no uh, fixed rule you can you ha have the flexibility to design your dashboard the way you want so here when we apply this query we can, can select a particular year it will be updated in the map so there are two ways of adding these filters first you can add the filter right on the worksheet so in that case only the particular visualization from the worksheet not other worksheets that are added in the dashboard will be updated so here when we apply filters it will only reflect to the map it won't reflect to the dual axis chart or the bubble chart okay so if you want to do that you will be learning in the coming lesson you can do create filters that will affect the entire dashboard and other visualizations so there could be different scenarios okay now it is not applicable in all the scenarios sometimes uh, you want uh, to add filter only to the map or sometimes you want to add filter to entire dashboard and different charts okay so this is how you create filters and add it to the dashboard so go to your data set and create different worksheets add different filters and here you can also apply a combination of the values say uh, you can either select all the years or a particular year so if you select 2019 and you can choose sunday and saturday so it will show you the values only for the year 2019 in all sundays and saturdays so in the weekends we got sales from california south dakota and louisiana we didn't got any sales from Canada by these parameters. So you can provide query based on time and other filters as well. So try creating your own filter, add it to the dashboard. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about calculating measures and creating a dual access chart in Tableau. So let's start. So once you've got uh, measures and you can apply it as a row and column to create various kinds of charts you can by default it is set to sum so it will generate the sum of the values but you can change it to count average anything else so just right click your property and change the measure count from sum to count count distinct median or any other values you can find average you can find minimum maximum 
standard deviation, percentile, variance, and other things. So based on your requirement, you can always change the calculating value of a measure. So you can do a lot of things. So measures are the numerical values and you can perform various kinds of operation. So uh, one axis of your chart will represent that thing. So here if we want to create a dual axis chart, what is dual axis chart for those who are uh, new to this thing? Uh, it has a two different axes, or the X and Y and it is used to uh, represent uh, complex information in simple way. So uh, here you got uh, two Y axis and two x axes. So on the left hand side you got this, uh, we are pasting it in a manner that uh, in the column we are applying uh, order quantity and in the row we got the order quantity sum and the sum of profit. And in the column we also have the country value. So this is a dual axis chart. On the left uh, y axis we got order quantity and on the right y-axis we got the profit and we have data for two countries Canada and US both represented uh, differently on the x-axis and you got a country by order quantity parameter on the graph. So here we got uh, two options one is order quantity and one is profit. So the bars will represent order quantity and the circles represent the profit value. So you can represent uh, various parameters on the same single graph. The dual axis graphs are very useful if you try to create a dashboard that will consist a lot of information. So you have a very limited space to represent a chart. Say you can have up to six or five charts that can elaborate very clearly although you can have more number of charts but uh, there is a restriction psychological restriction so you can just use four to five charts to be visually appealing. So in order to, if you have a say 12 or 13 charts to represent, you can create multiple dual axis charts to segregate the values in a single chart. You could create a uh, different kinds of dual axis charts with a uh, scatter plot and different things. The scatter plots are generally used to find the outliers. Okay, so you can try different charts with the same number of values and they will be migrated that way. So here we got a dual axis chart and we're using it to in our dashboard. So we can if you want to look at if you want to find out which country generated more profit we can clearly say USA generated more profit in this case. Uh, in Canada there are uh, less number of order quantities compared to USA. In the US we got a uh, more order quantities as well. Okay, so this graph will represent a huge uh, different kinds of data and you can create a uh, different kinds of dual axis chart in Tableau. So just get your data and try creating a visualization right from scratch. So keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you are going to learn about creating a butterfly chart in Tableau Celestial. So here we got different measures and dimensions. Let's take uh, any measure and put it on the columns. And let's take one more measure. And here we got two different bar chart. And let's put, put a dimension here. Let's say states and put it in the rows. So here we got two different bar charts arranged in the form of states. So we got a uh, total price and the profit. And we can change with a different measure say order quantity with respect to different states. You can take uh, any numerical value or measures and put it in the columns. So in order to make it butterfly, we need to do some different steps. First step is to make them align towards the central axis. We need to create a zero axis or we can reverse the direction of left sided chart. So it may look like it is appearing from the center just like a funnel chart but here uh, we won't be arranging funnel chart is generally arranged you can change the type of uh, individual measures say from sum to average to median or count anything you want okay so you can change it 
from measure type from sum to say median value if you uh, want to display the average uh, you can also display the counts individual counts and you can also convert a measure to dimension if you require next you need to go to right click and edit axis and just select the reverse so it will just reverse your left sided chart okay we just want to reverse the left sided because we want it to align towards the central vertical axis and we can change the color of individual bars anytime we want okay so let us make a left side with pink and the right side keep it blue you can take the same color but we want to make it more colorful so let's take a different color and we can drop uh, any information in the labels uh, details or tooltips tag say country information the state information anything if you want to display but here we got just two countries so it's better not to take this thing just use the state's name and we want to make it to the center so let's uh, hide this axis and just go to this colors and we can create a zero axis later on you can turn the opacity and reduce it or if you want to keep it 100% you can keep if you want a little bit less vibrant color you can turn the opacity a little bit lower okay so here uh, let us create a new calculated field for zeroth axis uh, you can just right click on the measures and create calculated field the first option provide a name for this calculated field uh, here we can just write axis zero for zero axis and just write zero number and hit ok so we just want to create an axis for this zero line and just drop it towards the between these two column values uh, right in the center so that it will be drawn in the center so here we got three uh, columns here the first thing is total price on the left hand side and the middle we got axis on the right hand side we got average price profit and here we can just add this state information and change it to the text from automatic so if you change to text the text information would be displayed and they would be automatically center aligned otherwise you can also align it you going to the text properties you can align to the center uh, make it vertical or horizontal and here we got a simple butterfly chart you can perform various additions to this modifications you could add the filters you could change the color of the appearance of text say if you want to uh, recolor the states uh, in terms of countries so here we just dropped a country in colors so all states would be recolored say the states that belong to united states uh, usa uh, will be colored in a dark blue and the states that belong to the canada uh, they are colored in the golden color and the yellow you can change the color of uh, individual states and how they are displayed by just uh, moving to the color option you can go to edit color you can change the color of either the bars or the countries okay on the right hand side we got this simple little box for the information of countries the states that belong to a different country and you can add this thing uh, we call this butterfly chart because a butterfly is generally consisted of multiple colors so just make this chart more colorful add a different color don't keep it monotonous and the second thing is a butterfly has two wings that spans on the left and the right hand side and it's got a zero axis this we have this kind of appearance okay we can change the color of individual countries here uh, say put green color for Canada or you can take a different color and just edit it and if you're not satisfied you can just rechange any time later just try to align with the story and because uh, we have the white background so it's better to take uh, some dark color so the text will be easily readable here we got a la large number of states information if you have a uh, less number of information it will be better to use any color you can also increase the size of text if you want you can keep it as small or readjust the size of the chart as for the requirement
if you add it to the dashboard so just try creating this butterfly chart uh, try to create your own variation of this chart you can add more information in the tooltip uh, so here we can add information say with the bar charts on the left hand side you can add some text information on the right hand side you can, on the right bar you have different information say profit on the left hand side we got order quantity and the center we got estates property so try to add as much as information if you that are required in an individual chart and make it beautiful as well so try to create your own butterfly chart in tableau you will be learning more in the coming lessons till then keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a funnel chart in tableau so let's start with this a funnel is generally in the form of a v shape where we have the upper section of the chart with a more width and lower section with a less width so you can display various information in the order so here let's put some value uh, put get product category in the rows and in the columns we got order quantity so here we have just got this bar chart and we can place one more order quantity because in this case we got uh, two different bar charts so we can just go to and delete it we have to cre create a calculated field because we want uh, the both chart both chart to appear from the center okay so just create a reverse order and here we will just uh, writing a code for reversing the order value so this uh, column will just contain uh, every information in the reverse manner okay so just put the reverse order and place minus sign before that so here we have created this measure and just put right before the order quantity so in this case we got the sum of order it is in the inclined manner okay it is reversed so it appears like uh, your chart is appearing from the center the ratio is generally maintained okay the ratio is followed but the appearance of your chart has now changed so we can readjust the size of these bars to fit according to your need and here we can just you can also remove something you can change the size you can make the bars more thick or small here you got uh, different marks and you can edit uh, various properties here you can change to average median if you don't want to put the sum then you can change the orientation from automatic to area chart and you can remove uh, some axis if you don't want so just expand it make this chart a little bit bigger so that you can have this funnel like look next we can uh, just recolor this thing or we can sort it okay when we hover around individual marks we can just check the values uh, so let's change the color you can also use the all uh, you can change the color in the combined way or you can individually select so just go to the colors property and drop product category on the colors so all the bars would be colored based on the product category okay so each category would have a different color you can change the color options here you can choose a different color palette or a different color scheme and you can also individually recolor a single entity say uh, you can change the color of food category the medicines uh, the technology sector and the different things say twice you can change so this is the color combination that applied it looks a uh, more decent color not very vibrant and just change the order you can just change it to area chart if you want an area funnel okay you can use this so it may depend on the scenario if you want to make it with bubbles uh, with square shapes or different shapes you can do so but ideally we require these bars to appear and you can add two different values on the left hand side we can add display say order quantity and on the right hand side we can drop uh, profit so in this case we got different information from the same bars okay 
uh, this doesn't represent the lower end or the upper end it just represent things are in order you can individually rearrange them or you can delete an individual column or remove it if you want okay say for some reason you don't want to sort your order you can just rearrange put something in order otherwise you can just go to the sorting option you can sort in two ways ascending and descending order and you can move on with the option you require ideally funnel charts are bigger on the top and the smaller values are displayed on the bottom end okay you can change it to pyramid chart a reverse of funnel is pyramid so in that case if you want a pyramid chart you got uh, the wider section on the lower end and the thinner section on the top it lay, may appear like a triangle so here we got this funnel and it simply compares different values put in order okay we can add these labels as you know and this is how you just create a funnel chart you can also improvise it further you could add caps to the bars you could add some more information like geographical information you could add different filters here you can just create custom filters for dates and different selections and you can use it for drilling down in the dashboard you could add it with a different visualization in a dashboard and you can change it to the line area chart this is how area funnel chart looks like so it looks like a funnel with the different values it has this indications on individual values okay so for some reasons you may require this kind of thing say water crisis uh, if you want to add some flow you could use this kind of chart otherwise uh, if you require bar charts it would be there based on your story and the importance of data that you want to convey say the area bar chart would be helpful if you want to show global carbon emission uh, because it looks like a smoke okay you can use it to show water harvesting or agriculture pesticide anything like that uh, the bar charts may have a comparative appearance okay so bars have the individual identity and they get compared but the area chart uh, they all look like as if they are connected and there is some order of appearance either the water and any, any flow is increasing or decreasing so based on your requirement if you, all the categories are almost different you can choose to use bar otherwise you can go with the area charts uh, visualization is important uh, and generally the charts are created for the information that you want to convey bars uh, the charts does not only show you the data you also want to share some insights based on the insights you can pre modify say if you have multiple information you could have this complex uh, funnel chart as here you could have the states information as well as category multiple dimensions can be added so don't try to make your chart very complex try to keep it simple but if you have a complex data to represent you may use this kind of visualization okay so two different parameters are adjusted here in a complex funnel so try to create your own funnel chart in tableau with a variety of data that you require uh, keep learning and keep moving ahead